Hi, welcome to our lesson number three on electrochemistry. So, in our lesson today, we are going to look at the rules used uh, in um, used in assigning the oxidation numbers. Rules used in assigning oxidation numbers. So let me just project those rules on your screen. Then we discuss them and then we do some examples. So here are the rules or the guidelines that are applied or used in assigning oxidation numbers. Now the first rule is that the oxidation number of uncombined oxygen is always negative 2 except in peroxides. Now we have the example sodium peroxide and hydrogen peroxide where the oxidation number is negative 1. So always the oxidation number of oxygen is negative 2, except if it is sodium, it is a peroxide. For example, sodium peroxide, hydrogen peroxide. Rule number two. The oxidation number of combined hydrogen is always positive 1, except in metal hydrides. That is a metal combined with hydrogen. When a metal reacts with hydrogen, a uh, the compound of a metal and hydrogen, that is what we call a metal hydride. So in metal hydrides, it is negative one, but if it is not a metal hydride, not metal and hydrogen, any other form where you have hydrogen combined with another atom, not hydrogen itself, but hydrogen with another element or with other compounds, or in other compounds, the oxidation for hydrogen is always positive one. So you only need to take note that except when it is with a metal, uh, it is a metal hydride. Otherwise, hydrogen is always positive one, oxygen always negative two. Rule number three, all atoms and molecules of elements have oxidation number zero. That means uncombined atoms are neutral. Atoms usually are neutral. For example, they have sodium, the oxidation number is zero, oxygen, zero, hydrogen, zero, aluminium, zero, neon, zero, potassium, zero, copper, zero. For molecules, the oxidation number. So molecules, that is atoms of the same elements combined, atoms of the same element. See, water is a molecule, but in water we consider hydrogen having a charge, oxygen having a charge, even though water is a molecule. But here, the molecules we are referring to are atoms of the same element combined. Such ones, their oxidation number is zero. For example, Cl2, zero, O2, zero, H2, zero, N2, zero, O3, zero, P3, zero, SH. No matter how many atoms they are, but as long as they are of the same element, their oxidation number is zero. All uncombined metals and nonmetals have oxidation number equal to, I mean, all combined, all combined metals and nonmetals have their oxidation number equal to their valency. That is, they will give you the oxidation state. And then for the oxidation number, you have to indicate the charge. Then you have to take note of. Uh, there are some elements, they have more than one oxidation number. And then rule number five, sum of oxidation numbers of atoms of elements making a compound is equal to zero. For example, now that is uh, using uh, the rule, we can determine the oxidation uh, number of uh, an atom in a compound which can be determined as follows. So let me just illustrate how to use the oxidation rule number five and its application. So let's consider, for example, now rule number five. We are saying that rule number five, that the total oxidation number of all atoms in a compound is zero. For example, now in copper two surface, the total oxidation number of copper plus that of sulfur plus that of oxygen the total oxidation number is zero. Now, how this rule is usually applied, for example, you can be asked, for, let's say, determine the oxidation number of sulfur in copper two surface. So let's say we don't know the oxidation number of sulfur. 
So we apply this rule as follows. We know for metal, the, the, we have said that for all metals, that I think was rule number four, if I'm not uh, wrong, let me just confirm that. Uh, the rule number four, that all combined metals and non-metals have oxidation number equal to, uh, to their combined metals and non-metals, they have oxidation number equal to their valency. Since copper here is combined with sulfur and oxygen, so copper is balanced too, so metals, being a metal, the metals react by losing electrons, so it's have positive two. Then sulfur, so we don't know. Let's say that is what we want to calculate. For oxygen, we have said rule number one, that the oxidation number of oxygen is always negative two, except in, um, in peroxides. So oxygen is, um, I mean, uh, yeah, that was rule number number one yeah, for oxygen, it is negative two. So except in peroxide, where it is negative one. So oxygen is negative two. That is the oxidation number. So when we add all these oxidation numbers, it should be equal to that. But also here you have to keep in mind the number of atoms. So what we do is this. So copper, there is only one atom of copper. So that will be plus two, then plus sulfur, we don't know, it is X, plus oxygen, it is negative two, but they are four of them, so you multiply by four. And then this should give us zero. So the total oxidation number, we will equate it to zero. So now solve for X. Put the like terms together, so this will be plus two, plus x. So this will be negative two times four it is negative eight. So this plus times negative it becomes negative equals to zero. Putting the like terms together, you have so x. So you have plus two minus eight. That will be minus six is equals to zero. So when you take this to the other side so that we remain with a non on one side, x will be positive 6. With oxidation number, don't just write 6. Oxidation numbers, either they are positive or they are negative. Don't just give an oxidation number uh, like uh, without insisting the charge. So therefore, the oxidation number of sulfur here is positive 6. And that is how rule number six, I mean rule number five, is applied. Now, let's consider rule number six. Let me project it as well on your screen and then we discuss. Just before we discuss uh, rule number six, there is an example of uh, some metals or some elements and their oxidation numbers. Now you can use the valences to determine the oxidation numbers. So the valences, for example, ion two, the valences. 2, iron 3, valence 3, copper 2, the valence is 2, copper 1, valence 1, chlorine is valence 1, oxygen, valence 2, sodium, valence 1, aluminium, valence 3, phosphorus, valence 3, and uh, lead, valence 2. Then now when it comes to the oxidation states, you have to indicate the charge, whether plus or minus. So for metals, the oxidation states will be plus. So there, there's a mistake there for ion should be plus two, uh, as well as um, ion two, ion three, they are supposed to be plus. So their oxidation numbers also, they should be plus. So there's an error there, let me just correct that and then reproject it again. So this is the correct format. So for the metals, their oxidation states and oxidation numbers are positive. So you can see, and they correspond to their valences. While for non-metal, the oxidation states and oxidation numbers correspond to their valences and they are negative. So let's look at the oxidation rule number six. So oxidation rule number six, the sum of the oxidation number of the atoms of elements making a charge uh, a radical or a complex ion is equal to the charge. So this uh, is almost the same as rule number five, 
In rule number five, we say the total equals to zero because that compound has no charge. But if there is a charge on the compound, that is a radical uh, complex ion, then, uh, then the total should be equivalent to that charge. So let me also illustrate that uh, by way of example. Okay, let's consider this example. So you are asked to calculate the oxidation number of manganese in this compound. Just like this one, but here there was no charge here, so we say it is equal to zero. But here since this has a charge, when you have given a compound with a charge, then in this case we will say the oxidation number is equal to that charge. So here we will say the total is equal to negative one. Then now we substitute like in this case. So let's say this one we, we don't know. This is X. Oxygen is negative two. So we work it out. This will be X plus negative two. There are four of them times four is equal to negative one. Then find the value of x, this will be x minus 8 is equal to minus 1. So take this minus 8 to this other side to become plus. So x is going to be plus 8 minus 1 is positive 7. That is why this compound is called manganate 7. Because the oxidation number of manganese in this compound is uh, let me consider one more example. Here you are required to determine the oxidation number of chromium in this compound. So the charge here is negative 2. So we we'll say the total oxidation number here is equals to negative 2. So chromium we don't know, so that is x. Oxygen we know from oxidation rule number 1, oxygen is always negative 2. So this will be x, but you have two of them, that gives you 2x plus this negative 2 for oxygen, there are 7 of them times 7 is equals to negative 2. So you have 2x minus, because this plus and that, the negative, we will convert the plus to negative, so minus 14 is equal to minus 2. Then take negative 14 to this other side, so the negative, when it crosses the equal sign, it becomes plus, so we are going to have 2x is equal to minus 2 plus 14. So minus 2 plus 14, that means 2x is equal to plus 12. So to get the value of x, divide by 2 on both sides. So x will be positive 6. And this is why this is called uh, dichromate 6 ion, because the oxidation number is that. And uh, just now to uh, hammer home this point between now this and this, for example, now determine the oxidation number of the of carbon in the following. So of carbon is that and the oxidation number of carbon is C O. So let's determine the oxidation number of carbon in CO2 and the oxidation number of carbon in CO. So in this case, we will use rule number five. It doesn't even, you don't have to cram that this is rule number two, number three, number four. As long as you know most of those elements, like the most common elements, we have oxygen and hydrogen. Like 
oxygen occurs in most of the compounds. So you have to know the oxidation number concerning oxygen. And then um, you have to know also the oxidation number of hydrogen. Then metals, it is easy. For metals, the oxidation number is equal to their valencies, positive. Then these other nine metals, most of them now, they are the ones that in most cases you will have to calculate. If you don't know, then you can apply the other rules to know. But once you know their valency is okay. But some have more than one valency. So it will be uh, more uh, easier to calculate for the non metals. So let's see. Now here we will apply rule number five. There is no charge here for this combined. So the total of this should be equal to zero. Um, so carbon, so we have said we want to determine, we are determining the oxidation number of carbon in this compound and in this compound. So we we'll say carbon we don't know, let it be X. Oxygen we know, oxygen is negative 2. So that means X plus negative 2, but you have 2 oxygen, so multiply by 2, this should be equal to 0. So x minus 4 is equal to 0. So take 4 to the other side. x is equal to negative 4. That is why this compound is referred to as carbon 4 oxide. So if you did not know why CO2 is called carbon 4 oxide, this is the reason. The oxidation number of carbon in CO2 is 4. That is why this compound carbon uh, and CO2 is called carbon 4 oxide because of this reason the oxidation number of carbon is 4 in this compound CO2 what about this one so I'll do the same thing so the total here since there is no charge the total will be equals to 0 then carbon we don't know X oxygen is negative 2 so in this case we have X plus negative 2 is equals to 0. So that means x minus 2 is equals to 0. Take this to the other side, become plus. So that is positive 2. That is why this compound is called carbon 2 oxide. It's because the oxidation number of carbon in this compound is 2. That is why CO is called carbon 2 oxide because the oxidation number of carbon in that compound is positive 2. So those are the oxidation rules and that is how to apply those oxidation rules. So for your practice, let me just project a few questions for your practice there at home. Try to answer uh, these questions. So attempt these questions. So you have the exercise 4.1. Determine the oxidation numbers of the atoms in brackets, question one and then question two. Which of the species in the equation undergoes oxidation and then which one undergoes reduction? So that will give you enough practice so you can pause and then copy and attempt those ones. So when we meet, um, for my students, when we, the schools reopen, I'll look at this work, take it seriously. So this work is compulsory for my students. When we meet, I will check on that work. <laughs>